this is a topic I have gotten some um, funny feedback <laughs> from one of the uh, people who's uh, following the choir director's page said, you know, I'm probably guilty of this. <laughs> I'm going to watch this because I want to see. And, you know, honestly, it's something that everyone had, everyone that I know that is a director has done this at some point in time because we get excited and, you know, sometimes we just do, we just do things. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. And that's one thing I, 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 it's a big topic. Um, and I'm, I can't really do it justice. So I'm going to stay on the surface with it, but performance overkill. And that is something we see on so many venues. It's not just in the choir, in the church, but it's also when we're out, you know, we could be at a park, we could be anywhere and it's just like people just do things beyond the door it's just like really was all that necessary and you know i i don't honestly i know why well thank god oh shanita said yeah i know one of you all was in a bad storm shanita is and the actress said it's not storming right now well thank god for that Whew, hope it passed i hope it passed by and god keeps you safe down there shanita um Sometimes, you know, I just wonder why people do it. You know, sometimes I think that we think that's what we're supposed to do. You know, that we move from um we move from ministry to entertaining. And when you entertain, you always looking for the next thing to make it uh give to give the wow factor. You know, whereas if you're in ministry, you're not concerned <laughs> with the why you okay you know you're not concerned about all of that your basic thing is that you want to reach somebody you want to encourage somebody you want to help somebody and i was thinking sometime when i'm sitting in concerts and things and i'm watching people and i'm like I, I know a lot of you have seen that little uh facebook snippet uh from that one little uh little guy he says um i'm tired of this church <laughs> it's just like and you sit there when you get to the point where you see a lot of performances you just get tired you're just like you know it's just entertaining um and one reason i you can tell that a person is not ministering but they're entertaining and not all the time but most of the time when they get through doing whatever they're doing it's like you can hear crickets it's like nothing ever happened <laughs> and you just got through doing all of this sweating and jumping and all of this stuff. And when you get done, it's like everybody's sitting down like oh, next moving on and you don't want that. So, I mean, that would be, that was signal to me that you more entertaining than you are reaching people. I think a lot of people do performance overkills a lot or they go beyond the door because they see what everybody else do. You know what we have gotten, society has gotten us, even in the gospel and music ministry arena, they have gotten us to the point where we are, that we as a whole, not everybody, but we as a whole are looking to be famous, to be um, acknowledged. You know, when I walk in the door, you know who I am, you know, or whatever, but we're not, we're more focused on being famous than we are doing the job. And I was thinking, we see the popular people do do things like everybody can't be Kirk Franklin. Everybody can't be Yolanda Adams. Everybody can't be Kim Burrell. Everybody can't be Ty Triblett. Everybody can't, you know, and it's like when we see them do it, realizing that they're at a concert. A concert is a different venue from your regular church service. Now, I'm not saying that choirs can't do anything because my choir does we do some motions and whatever else, but we're not up there doing like just mainstream calisthenics. We're not doing that because that's not the venue that we're on. And we see them do it. And a lot, I think a lot of people see it. And then, and then it's like, they want to imitate that because that's the arena I want to be on. I want to be on that stage. I want to bring in that money. I want to bring, you know, and it's like, honestly, Celebrityism, if you're looking at it from a gospel music industry side, it's almost like football, basketball, and all of that. It's only a certain percentage is really going to get up there to that top where they're going to be getting various things. You know what I'm saying? It's only a certain percentage of us is going to reach that plateau. I mean, I mean, you know, so if you don't reach that plateau, are you a complete failure? Uh, does that mean that you're not anointed, which is a word, which is a term that everybody's killing me with? You know, it's just like, 
They they anoint everything. They even anoint dog. They even say the dog is anointed. I mean, it's just, it's gone beyond the door. We use terms so much and so interchangeably that they use, lose their significance in what we're doing. And I think that when we see other people doing things and we try to emulate that, it brings in a spirit of competition. We no longer rule by the flesh. We're, I mean, by the spirit, correction. Ugh. We're no longer moved by the spirit. We are moved by the flesh. The flesh can make you do a lot of different things. <laughs> that you really normally would not do or even contemplate of doing. But I, I was thinking a lot of times, and these are just a couple of things that I noticed. I went to a concert not too long ago and, um, and also a, a couple of more events. And I, and I just sat there. I just like cringed because like, I'm, you know, as a director, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I know it all or whatever, because there are a lot of uh, directors out there and people that know music. And, you know, even if you're not an instrumentalist, there are a lot of things that you that you learn just by being around music. So I'm not, by no means trying to make it seem like I'm the authoritarian on this. But it's just some things that I notice when people overkill. Uh, you know, uh, we just do things too long. It's like a song. Like when the choir is singing a song. I see people, they just sing, you know, they sing a song 5, 10, 15 minutes. One song. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's just, you know, it's like they do a vamp. It's like they sing the song. Okay. And everybody kind of got with you. Okay. That's good. Then they have to do a vamp, a reprise or, you know, go back to the vamp, redo the vamp. Okay. That goes over. Everybody receives it. Then they turn around and they have to do another vamp. And it's like they have three or four vamps. And it's like you get into the point where people just sit down on you. And look, I don't like, you're not even watching the audience. You're singing too long. Or they have, if they, they, um, or if they tell you to do an AM, I seen one choir do this and it was, they just killed it. Now they sang the, they sang the first song and it was good, you know, but then they told them, say, we'll do an A and B selection. I don't know if they couldn't think of anything at the same time, but then the choir turned around and sang another song, just like the same beat, the same speed, the same, whatever as that song. So it sounded like they were continuously singing the same song and it was just like, People were just sitting there like, oh my God, you could just hear the comments and the thing. And it's just like, you know, and they just kept going. And it's like, you, you know, I tell young directors all the time, I say, you know, you have to watch the song. I just tell them, make sure your song, exactly the actress for somebody sitting in the pew, that's too much. I tell them, I tell everybody, and I've been accused, oh my God, my entire directing the career. Everybody has, people have accused me of being too short, but I understand that people can only sit there and listen to you for so long. I don't care how good you are. They can only sit there and listen to you for so long. And you know, I'm one of those choir directors that when I'm, if I'm called to sing at a church, all of my, all of my songs that I sing, if they tell me sing three songs, each one of them will be different. One may be acapella, one may be calypso, and then one may be, a, you know, the Pentecostal thing. I'm always making sure it's different because I realize people, they lose interest. You know, we live in a society where everything is instant. They don't like, you know, if, if you go too long, they kind of tune you out and they, you know, they off on another tangent. But they, you know, those two things. And then, I, you know, it also the calisthenics. It's just, my, you, you can't do motions on every song. Then it, it, that too becomes an overkill. You know, like I, I've seen some people, um, when they sing one song, it's okay to do little motions and things like that. that. That's fine. But when you're doing all of this different stuff, and on every song, you're doing the same thing. You got all these motions and, you know, and, and everybody's sitting back like, it's you know what I'm saying? That's an overkill. There is no reason for you to constantly do all these different things in a song. There ought to, there should be a song where you just sing, just flat foot sing, you know, just let the music flow. Let people, let the music saturate the minds and the hearts of the people. That is, you know, and then maybe on your next song, you can add, you know, you know, do whatever. I mean, then it's, it's tolerable. You understand what I'm saying? I, don't, I mean, and I'm trying to be as gentle as possible because I don't want to come across like, ah, rah, 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 you know, but it's just things that I noticed, you know, and another pet peeve of mine is when they call you to sing and you got a director that's got to get up there and give a testimony, you know, and you're sitting there like, they, you know, 
everybody, you know, and I understand this is whatever. But I noticed that predominantly, you know, everybody kind of has the same phrase when they get up. You know, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Well, we just got through doing that with somebody else. So here you come, the first performer, which, you know, it, when, when they line us up, it's usually from the least, yeah, like they put show, right. They start from the least popular one up until the, to the main uh, attraction. Because if they start with the main attraction, then half the folks going to walk out. I mean, you know. So, I mean, when you got the first person getting up there doing... <laughs> Exactly, Tony. When they call you to say, just say. I mean, and then, you know, and then everybody says the same thing. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands and tell them thank you. Lift your hands and tell them. What's wrong with y'all? Lift your hands. Because the first person just did that. So you're, <laughs> so you're asking me to do the same thing. I, you know, honestly, I don't even want to do that. When, I, when they call me to, up there, and like I said, they get on me because I, you know, when you call me up to the sink, that's what I'm getting up there to do. You didn't call me to speak. I'm not the main attraction. So all I'm going to do is get up there and I tell everybody when I'm on my way, you get information. It shouldn't take you that long to get information. When they call redeem, you should be all the way. You should be halfway up the aisle by the time I even get up out of my seat. Musicians should be on their music. Everybody should be queued up by the time. And I sit there on purpose. When they call the church, and I know you're getting ready to call the church, and they all look at me, I'm like, mount up. Start walking down the aisles and everything before I even get out of my seat. <laughs> and when they scold you for not being hype about Exactly. You're right, Natalie. And I do. I tell my choir, be up there. And everybody's in line. So by the time I get up out of my seat, walk down that aisle, everybody's in formation, get a key, we start singing right away. I don't, you know, because you... We don't have to, I don't like time killers. We don't have time to waste. Nobody asks you to get, if you give a testimony, then that's part of your time to sing. So you get up there and you give this long testimony about whatever. And we, you know, and I understand, you know, I, I you know, sometimes the spirit is there for you to do it. Okay. But then all the time, the spirit ain't there for you to get up and give all this long conversation. If you are not the main attraction. So then, you know, it, it, and so I get up and I just do whatever I got to do and I go sit down, you know, because I have always been taught. You don't want to make people glad on the wrong end. You want them to be glad to see you get up and hate to see you sit down because you're so good, because you minister, because you reach the people. They don't want you to sit down, but it's a bad thing when you get ready to get up and everybody like, oh, they hate for you to get up and they glad when you sitting down. And sometimes some people take that clapping and all of that, that we did good. No, they glad you sitting down because when they sitting down, they sitting there looking at you like, yes, you know, sit. And we have to be cognizant of that. You don't want to make people glad to see you sit down because you put a lot of work into your rehearsals, into your songs, into your selections, into, uh, you put a lot of effort in that. So you don't want that effort to be, kicked to the side or thrown away or discarded because that's hurtful. It is. That's hurtful for you to do all of this and everybody's sitting there looking at you like, you finished? <laughs> Are you finished? You don't want that. Okay. You want people to enjoy what you do. So, you know, when we get, when you get up, don't overkill with the talking. If they tell, now sometimes they tell you to um, say a few words. Literally, that's what I do. I, I say a, I say very few words. I just get up there because my mind is on ministry, is on, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm, I have everything timed. And I guess if, I've always done that. But when I, um, when we were in the House Sweets of Sound competition, they told us, your song cannot be more than 4.5 minutes. If you go over 4.5 old minutes, we deducting from you. So I had the song time to four, I think I was like 4.02 minutes. And the only reason I did that was because they, I was going to make it, I was going to make the song like three minutes. We get up there, yes, I got it. You know, I got a reason. And we sit down. They were like, no, nah, Angie, it's got to be at least four minutes. So I'm like, I had the organist with the time. I was like, when it gets 359, hold that finger up, then I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm coming out of this song. I mean, you have to be cognizant of your audi audience. You have to read their faces. No, we don't. You know, it's, it's, it's a circle. 
You look at the audit, you follow the spirit. And one thing I can tell you, if you follow the spirit, when you're up there and you're getting ready to do, it's not a really a performance, but it's a ministry. When you get ready to get up in ministry, the Spirit will let you know what to sing and what you're doing is appropriate if what you're doing is in order. He will let you know, even when you're up there directing, you can tell when the fluff went out of the song. You know, and I don't care, you know, we could be singing and everybody going and you're on the vamp and you you doing, but something inside will let you know, all right, cut this off. This is it. You didn't, you done enough. And then I'm like, I'm out. I'm, I'm done. And everybody, and then I get all the people saying, what you cut that song off for? Well, I get that. But see, the Spirit knows when it's time for you to cut that song off. You have to leave people hanging sometimes. You know, sometimes we wear that out. And that's, I guess that's what brought performance overkill to my mind. Because we just wear stuff out. Why can't we just leave it in the air? You know, like some songwriters... They write a song and instead of ending on the first note, they are in on the sixth or the seventh note or they in, you know, put tension in the song. And you're sitting there like, why are you in this? Because they ended on, the, on in such a way that you um, want more. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes we do that with the song. Instead of just cutting it off and let the song go and let everybody, boom, 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 you know, or let people stay in their vein of praise or whatever. We got to, t we don't have to do that. <laughs> directors we don't have to do that if you sing in a song and the spirit tell you to cut that song you know like sometimes like more abundantly more abundantly boom and we you tell the choir to exit and leave everybody you know some get the tamarind everybody's still going on look that's the best feeling when you get through and you know the spirit tells you cut it off let it go let keep them hanging and you let it go and sometimes you go back to your seat and then the audience starts singing the song. Let them call you back up there to direct or sing. Don't you take it upon yourself and run up there and say, oh, don't do that. Let them, I, you know, I let them call me back up there. I sit in my, and I, you know, even with the state choir that I'm over right now, when they're singing, I cut it off and we sit down and the audience still jumping. Bishop is up clapping. Everybody's still going. And then the preachers, everybody starts singing the song. I just sit there and let them keep singing. Well, go ahead and sing. I'm not fit to move. You know what I mean? I'm like, let the spirit do what it's what he wants to do. And then, you know, sometimes the bishop or say, hey, Aaron, sometimes the bishop or somebody will come up and say, come back up here and direct this song. Okay. Okay. And then when I get back up and direct it, I'm only up there 60 seconds. I set, I shut it back down and go back to my seat. And sometimes it keeps going. It just keeps going. Then I call one of the preachers out of there that used to direct the choir. You come direct this song. And then he'll do what he's doing, and then he'll shut it down. You know what I'm saying? But you have to under, you, you have to follow the Spirit, because the Spirit knows everybody and what everyone needs. You know, and sometimes we can get so excited and, and in that vein that we just want to, we just want to, you know, I'm the superstar. You know, like I'm the quarterback, and I made a quarterback sneak and got that ball in the end zone. Yeah, and I spiked it. I'm the one that made the play. You know? No. You're not the one that made the play. Now, you might be the quarterback. But you're not the one that made the play. Jesus made the play. The Holy Spirit made the play. So let's not be so eager to, to vamp the vamp. Okay? Let the vamp go. If we sang the song, we got to the vamp, let it go. <laughs> Believe me, they'll call you back and say, come back and sing. Let it go. We, you know, we don't have to close every loop. Sometimes you just got to let it hang and let the folks get blessed. And they'll remember that more so than you... Then you sitting up there singing the vamp five and ten times, and then after a while you see you turn around and the whole audience sitting down. I've seen that happen to people. And that actually happened to me once. I was younger um, when I was directing, and that happened to me, and I haven't done it since. I got up there, and I tell you, I just did it too long. My mother didn't even have to tell me the song was too long. When I turned around and saw the audience, I knew the song was too long. <laughs> and I made a promise to myself that I would never do that again. And I have not. And I was in my, that was like 20 some years ago. I haven't done that yet. I, I, I refuse to do it. So, I mean, and we don't, but we do, we have to be cognizant of our audience, you know, watch the people, you know, one of the things, just a couple of points that I had, notice the spirit of the venue, whether you in a church, whether you in a park, whether you in a hall, Wherever you are, whatever venue you're on, and you're called to sing or do whatever you do, 
Notice the spirit of the place. You know what I'm saying? Notice the atmosphere. Notice how, how people are feeling. Notice, uh, just notice the spirit of the place. That will kind of tell you what to sing, how you need to react, and whatever. And for God's sake, please don't get up there and have all, you know, follow people and say, have everybody doing that. You know, I don't do that. You know, when people say, I, you know, if I'm the first person to speak, I may say it. And a lot of time I don't, I'd say something, peace be unto the saints. Or I get up there and say, good evening, everybody. How you doing? You know, something different. I mean, just something different. And people respond to that better with you getting up doing something different than everybody doing the same thing. Because it falls on deaf ears. And you don't want to be that one that's falling on deaf ears. Notice the spirit of the venue. Also, notice, uh, notice the crowd's reception when you're up there singing. You can kind of feel that. Even though your back may be to the audience. But you can feel, <laughs> you can feel the vibes from the audience. And that's not to deter you from doing what your job is, to get up there and sing to the glory of God. All the time they won't get with you because sometimes it's a little bit harder because sometimes when you get up to die, when, you know, it's a little harder because the, the person that may have sang before you and have their choir, hey, Ellen McGee, may have their choir, they may have already kind of brought the spirit down. You know, people do do that. Some choir, your choir, choirs can bring the spirit. You know, you, you just bring it all the way down and you're sitting there going, Lord Jesus, what in the world am I going to sing? You know, what can I do? Um, so, I mean, you, you have to watch what's going on. And sometimes you have to notice the song. Notice the songs that everybody is singing. Everybody can't do um, praise and worship. You have a concert full of praise and worship songs. I mean, you know, if it's a musical, you kind of go in there to... Um, hear different songs and like sometime I go when we have to sing and everybody's pretty much singing praise and worship. <laughs> Ellen McGee says, yes, they can bring it down. I can name a few. I'm telling you. And that's a bad feeling. You know, I hate, you know, in a way it's kind of easier coming behind that. It's easier to come behind that when they bring it down than, you know, somebody that's already up in the bank. But let me do, if somebody is, um, if, if they're singing before me and they kind of bring it all the way down, then chances are I'm going to, I'm not going to sing another praise and worship song. I'm going to pick a hand clap foot stump song. You know, I'm going to pick something that everybody bump on. Cause you know, I'm looking at everybody. You have to notice I'm looking around and everybody like this. I'm not finna come back with a praise and worship song, especially if that's what they just did. I'm going to go and get an old school song from the past that everybody's familiar with and get the whole audience to participate and bring the service back up. Um, to help the service. Uh, what does Ella McGee says? Everybody either wants to do praise and worship or either the latest gospel hit, but no one wants to take it back. Exactly. And that's what I always do. And Ella McGee has seen my, heard my choir sing out in public. I rarely sing the latest songs. I always go back and get old songs, something that ain't nobody heard or something that God gave me that I just threw together because <laughs> sometimes I do that. I can't figure out nothing to say. And I tell the choir, I was like, we just going to throw, okay, I'm going to take in this song, this song, this song. We just going to throw it together. Y'all watch me. Okay. And we going to move on. Okay. So I don't sing what's popular. You, I go back and get something old because that's what we, re honestly, as choirs, that's what we really need to do. We need to go back and get these old songs. Ella Kevin McGee, down. Please, Ella McGee. I'm so tired of singing that song. Ella McGee said, that's why I don't do musicals anymore. It, me either. Down in my soul. I know everybody. <laughs> that's an, just in case everybody. That's an acapella song that I arranged. How long ago was that, Ella McGee? It had to be 15, 20 years ago. They still ask for me to sing that song. And I want to do. I'm like, I want to bring out one of the other newer acapella songs that I arranged. But they always request that. Bishop requests that. I just. Okay, I have to keep singing it because that's what the people like, okay? But, yeah, Hatcheroy, that is great. The old stuff is what got the power. Exactly. Old songs are the best. They are. And that's what I do. And, you know, that brings up a service at any point in time. I recommend that every choir goes back and gets those old choir songs and bring them out. Just a closer walk with thee. Something very simple. You know, just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Then all three, let, let, let it be. You know, something just real, that's what I do. 
And I just pull that together. And then it just and it brings the service back up and, and just bless people. Do that. That's always a fail safe to go and get one of the old songs. Um, and another thing I'm finding out, this is just something that I just realized and I probably should have realized a long time ago. You know, a lot of times we do mass choirs, especially in our jurisdiction or in our churches. We, we, um, have a lot of, you know, a lot of choir members and we have, you know, and, and a lot of churches still like for the choirs to march in. We don't do it as much. Most of the time the choirs walk in instead of marching in. And I tend to find sometimes we waste these good songs on, um, we waste these good songs on marching in. Let me read a couple of comments. Elder Kelly, Kevin McGee said, it's a redeemed classic. Okay, Ella McGee. Um, he says, I love directing the old songs, especially the 80s and the 90s. Yes. Uh, Jack King said, we just sang nothing but the blood of Jesus. Up tempo. That's great. And, you know, that's a great thing to do. Take the old songs and just revamp it a little bit. Add a little more, as they say, add a little seasoning on there and make them great. Um... Vonsha Brown says, I promise you any Walter Hawkins, James Cleveland, Maddie Moss Clark, et cetera, song or hymn will move a service. Absolutely. I found Jesus. I think that's Martin Summers, wasn't it? And I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm singing tenor on that. Um, anything, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, James Cleveland, and also Thomas Whitfield, Precious Jesus. Oh, my God. I love that song, Precious Jesus. How I love you. Um, Hatcher Roy say, just rearrange them, but keep the spirit of the song. Exactly. That's all you got to do. And you know, it's, it, it, it brings a nice mix to the service, you know, cause the younger director is generally going to bring in a praise away, you know, and I love, I, I, I love the young directors because they have so much energy and they have, so they have a quickness about them, the young people, but at the same, yeah, thank you, Vonsha. That's what I thought. I thought that was Myrna Summers. I, that just dropped in my spirit that quick. I need to sing that very, very soon. Um, they have, but they don't understand, you know, once some of them, I talk to them and I let them know you get caught up in the callous thing. I mean, they just get up caught up in the, you know, everybody, they see Ricky Dillard and all of these people and they try to do that. And I tell them, you need to develop your own style. Learn the old songs. And I know the millennials really don't want to learn that, but that is your base. When those old songs get in your spirit and they, and you sing them and you in, in front of the people, they kind of govern you. They kind of work with you because you just, I don't know. It just, they just do something to my spirit and, and, it, and it just helps me to stay in the vein. And a lot of these songs are great. Don't get me wrong. I love the new the new renditions of certain songs and whatever, but it's something about the classics and the music that is associated with them. It just reaches the spirit. It just does something. The hymns, the, the old song, we had some real choir music back then. I mean, we had so much to choose from even Benny Cummings. Now he was, he, he was, he was kind of rough, <laughs> but Benny Cummings with his stop now, you know, and I mean, it, it's, it's, it's like a revivalist type thing. And I guess that's what I'm on the mission to try to revive that old way of doing, bring it up to the new, because you know, sometimes these younger ones, they don't know this music, but when they hear it, it's like, wow, where was I? Why didn't y'all tell me about this song? Well, we trying to tell you now, <laughs> but I, I'm, those are just some little points. Notice the spirit of the venue, the church hall of the park. Notice the crowd that's in the, in the audience. No matter where you are, notice how they are. Notice the songs that are being sung. Notice the effect that those songs are having. Notice, just be aware of your surroundings. Don't just arbitrarily pick something and just say, okay, this is what we're running with. There's a purpose behind song selection. There is a purpose behind Picking the right song. I just say the same thing in a different way. But it, I'm, I'm trying to stress a point. But it really is. You know, and I think that when directors actually look at that and know that you're ministering, you get out of the performance wheel. You know, we get we like that little hamster. We in there, we just running, running, running. Because we see somebody else running and we just running, running, running. And that's not what we should do. You know what I'm saying? Remember, what you are doing is ministry. When you realize what you're doing is ministry, you sing and you operate in the spirit so that whatever you doing, a lot of times you may not even sing the whole song. 
You might just sing. You may only get through verse one and two and the spirit come through there and lay everybody out. And you're like, we didn't even finish the song. <laughs> but it's okay. As long as God has his way, it's okay, y'all. It really is. If he, if you only seen the blood of Jesus shared with me way back on Calvary and you don't even get to it reaches. Or if you get to the, it reaches and the, and, he, and the spirit come through and lay everybody out, starting with the quiet, let it go. We're done. I do it all the time. Sometimes we sing a song. I have the choir to sing during the offering a song. And that song take over and the whole church starts singing. I'm not coming back with another selection. Uh-uh. I look at the pastor. He look at me. I'm like, I'm done. That's it. The spirit has done this. This is the offering. And folks shout. For folk, you know, sometimes they shout during the offering. They start a praise up. And then sometimes people get on the altar and start crying. I'm done. <laughs> this is offering time. I'm done. Or a shout breaks out. I'm like, I'm done. You ain't got to call us no more. Y'all come on out the stand and take your seat. We're done. You know? So long, let's come out of the performance and the, the what they call it, the entertainment side and get back in the ministry. Let's get back in the ministry. I know that's not, you know, the most popular, but you'd rather be known for ministry than entertainment. You know, because if you entertain, then you always got to come up with the next big act. You know, and, and that's stressful. Whereas if you're doing it from the ministry side, it can be stressful too because you're dealing with a lot of different people and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But there's a difference because you're working from the spirit as opposed to the flesh. Because the spirit, when you're operating in the spirit, it knows how far to go. It won't let you go too far because it'll stop you and say, okay, that's enough. Let's let it go. Whereas the flesh will cause you to do, go, do the overkill. You, you go beyond the door and you out there instead of... <laughs> All right, anyway, Hatcher Roy says the old song, old songs give us foundation for good spirit-filled creativity. Hatcher, you need to be doing a show. <laughs> you need to do a show. You should, and, and he is absolutely right. They give us the, that's your foundation. That's your foundation. You can pretty much go anywhere. When you and I and I stress that to the young guy, to the young ladies and young men who are directors, they want to do the here and now. I get that. I get it. You want the latest licks, the latest vocal arrangements, the latest whatever. But that's not where it's at. I know some people that can bring the house down. They can bring the house down and they don't have a pitch perfect voice. But my God, when they start singing tears so sweet to trust in Jesus or talk it over with Jesus. I mean, oh my God, they were, and they, and you can hear the voices not pick, pick. I mean, you just sitting there like they sliding past notes, but my God, they got the spirit of God and they later, you just, I just stand there and let them go on, you know, and they, you know, I, I purposely with me, all I care about is who get the job done. I don't, honestly, if you get to ripping and running, as rich as uh, Professor Richard Smallwood says, with all these melismas, <laughs> you're doing all that stuff. You lose me because to me, you're focusing too much on the on, on the cal vocal calisthenics instead of singing to reach the masses. You know, and you don't want what you're doing in vain. And we work very hard. I mean, honestly, directors, we and directress says. We work very hard. Some of us labor hard. We enjoy what we're doing. We love what we're doing. We're committed to being the best director, directress that we can be. We give it all we have. So you don't want all of your efforts to just um, to be cast away to the side. You don't want that. You want you. I mean, you want value to your work. So remember that. You don't have to work it until you work up a sweat. And, you know, if for some of us, the hair, you know, swell up and all. You don't have to do that. I'm wiping my forehead because I'm just getting a visual about that. Um, you don't have to do that. Let him sing. The spirit come in. Let him do his job. You know, you don't have to do it. Wait. Um, Hatcher Roy said, there's an old mother here will wreck a service every time she sings. Who is that, Hatcher? Put him out. Put him out here. Okay. Jack King. Ah, uh, hey, Jack. He says not to take away from the topic. No, that's okay if you have a question. 
He said, what are your feelings about songs being sung in the key of E and A, especially praise and worship? Honestly, Jack, I don't, I, I, I don't have, those are not my favorite keys because I don't like the chord, the way the, the chord structures are in the key of E. <laughs> I don't. But me, I personally, I, whatever song I sing, I sing it in the key, basically, that it is in. So I don't really have a preference. Sure, Mother Moses can tear it up. I mean, that. I mean, first of all, she's got the life. She's got the walk. She's got the talk. She's got it all working together. And I know she knows the creator. So I know she, and, and by that time, she's probably saying all these different years. But you know what? It doesn't, honestly, for me, it doesn't matter. And I'm not deviating. I'm just commenting on what Hatcher said, main thing. And you know what? When mothers like that sing, you don't want to come behind that. I mean, I know I don't. You know, I have, um, like, my mom sings, um, and then we have a church mother, and our church is singing, and then my aunt, she's, well, she's not older. She's in her late 60s, but she sings. And, and when she does, it's just like, okay. I mean, she, <laughs> she sings the song a long time as well, but, I mean, she sings, though. You know, and it's just like. Sometimes we like TT. You know what? What you doing? What what what, what you doing? You know, but, but it's all good. Oh, that's all I had. I rather, you know what? Honestly, I rather be accused of being too quick than being too long. Okay, everybody. But what you done? Have a wonderful night. Get some rest. Enjoy your weekend. And those of you who are down in the southern area that in those stones, praying for your safety, that God keep you and protect you is my prayer. Thank you for all things. Love everybody. And have a wonderful night and. Peace.